Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we met Edgeworth again. It's been a year since he supposedly died, but he's come back from the grave, quote unquote, and now he's telling us more about the case that we're about to jump into, so let's go ahead and continue on with this. Hmm. This woman is another key to the case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago, but suddenly she was called away by a production and became Juan Carita's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Impax died. B but her death was a suicide, right? Yes, but there's still one riddle left unsolved. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Miss Impax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find a suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impax had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Carita himself. The victim? He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Carita hid his own manager's suicide note? But why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond that is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part one. So here's something that's kind of weird. So you get the suicide report, and then the, f the thing that you have to do is you need to immediately represent this evidence to Edgeworth, and he'll give you the next part of the report. I don't like to look through reports. I, l I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. The second part is the report about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name... It's Adrian Andrews. Miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She... She tried to kill herself? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try and kill herself. You think she's a strong career woman? That is just her image. Adrienne Andrews. She has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her codependency. That's the key word. Codependency. The word most unsuited to describing that woman. So how are Adrian Andrews and, the, and codependency related? Adrian Andrews' attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste Impax. And? And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Quite possibly because she had lost her will to live. Lost her will? But why would she... A pillar of strength, her mentor, Celeste Impax, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Is this what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrienne Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She is a person who looks for someone who she can trust unconditionally. And once she finds that someone, she blindly follows them. Without someone to guide her, she feels uneasy and can't carry herself through life. And that's... And that's her codependency? When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Alright, now that we've went ahead and learned a bit more about Adrian's past, 
it's time to head back to Ungard's room because if you'll remember from a previous episode, she has some psyche locks that we need to break down. So we're just gonna quickly uh, take a jog over to there and see if we can break them open. I do really feel sympathetic for Adrian here because she did go through quite a lot of stuff. Adrian is probably my favorite character that originates from this case, except for maybe the killer, because he's a super cool villain, and his voice is pretty fun to do, and he has a cool design and all that stuff, but Adrian is probably my favorite, like, character in terms of likability and stuff like that. Oh, Miss Andrews is here, but it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca Von Karma. Miss Von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? That's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy. Don't make me laugh. I'll show you something interesting, little girl. What's that? An electromagnet receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fools every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for that poor Detective Gumshoe now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews. Y yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? So we've already got all of our conversations here. Now all we have to do left, now all we have left to do rather, is break your locks. Motive for murder. Why was Juan Corita murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. On Guard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answer? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corita. You were not that close? That's right. I've never been good at being intimate with another person. You're not good at being intimate with another person. Somehow, I highly doubt that. For proof of that, we need the magazine clipping about their affair. You and Mr. Corita had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate third tabloid article. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people bought into this story. Hm, <laughs> as to be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self. Stay on her good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close with someone? Me? Need to get close to Mr. Corita? As if there was ever su As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close with Mr. Corita because of this person's sake? That person would be... Celeste Impax. Celeste Impax, your mentor. Why do you know about Celeste? Miss Impax. She, she committed suicide, didn't she? But it looked like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Carita's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Carita, so you can find out more about her suicide. Y you have a great imagination. You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. M Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Was there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you're completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. And that's because... As mentioned in the suicide report, seemingly, her suicide note was hidden. Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? 
It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Corita. Juan? And, Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corita. I've sat by quietly and listened to you, your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. And it's the impression you like to give. However, I don't believe that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste impacts with someone very special to you. Miss Andrews, you... You went through it too, didn't you? Went through what? A suicide. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help and you live by yourself. Y yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie. A facade. You're always... You've always searched out... You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. That's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop! When Celeste passed away so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own. But, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Corita of hiding Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close. Am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why was the victim killed? Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, seems that you have become the one most likely to want Mr. Corita dead. M me Miss Impax was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? It's true. I am a woman who can only live in insecurity. I am physically small, and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I've pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews! This one thing, it's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine, and mine alone. Uh, I, I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Corita. Celeste. Without her. Without her, I became scared. Everything. Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corita to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me. That's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My... attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews... If... If people found out about my weakness, I... I would sooner choose to die than live. Uh, Alright, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. 
Miss Andrews. I guess she's the always thinking type. She never says anything carelessly, it seems. Thank you very much. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. What is it? It looks like... a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly? Sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. Ungard in your capable hands. Well, we've pretty much examined this place top to- oh, Never mind, guess we have some dialogue here. Well, I think we've gathered about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. Always looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh no! I'm okay, really. I'm fine, I really am. You don't look fine to me. Phoenix pretty much said what I was going to say. We've examined this place top to bottom, talked to everyone, learned pretty much everyone's secrets, broken all of the psyche locks, not really any place left ahead, but back home. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Mr. Impax's suicide note? That's right. She's also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. Ah, Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Hello? This is the Law Office of Wright & Co. <clears throat> Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. M Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not come within a few feet of her this whole time. Phew! Which is why, I suppose, she is absolutely famished. W what so I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya! Let me hear her! Very well. Ask my- Maya, is that you? Sis! Ask my sis! Maya! Maya! Damn it! He cut me off! Mystic Maya said ask my sis, didn't she? Sis, what does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. Ah, uh, you're a hopeless one. Uh, um, s sorry. Ah! Mia! I have a message from Maya, so come, ask me anything you want about her. Hey, Mia's back. Do you have any dialogue about Charlie? What's going on with Maya is the most important thing right now. Uh, yeah, right, we're in serious mode now. Can't talk about anything except for what's going on. Probably should have expected that. How's Maya? She's safe. For now. That kidnapper is one, is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left. Then I gathered as much information about her surrounding as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like this. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper. What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel, and she was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ah! Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her. Mmm. I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. 
I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not gonna die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Alrighty, so we're getting to play as Maya here. Not much to look at, but might as well look anyway. What's this? Feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Also, yeah, this is one of those situations in a game where it's super bright for us, the player, but in-universe, it's supposed to be, like, pitch black, pretty much. There's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. Drat. It's locked. Hmm. But this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that, like that around here I could use. Huh? Someone dropped a card here. It looks kind of like, like a business card, but there's no name on it. Hmm, it's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. Ah, that's it! The shell card! Now, an interesting thing that I should point out, which you might have already noticed, this is the same card that Adrian Andrews was holding. Something to keep in mind for now. If I, was if I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius! All right, now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting. Or worried. <laughs>